Umaga po sa inyong lahat. Uh, kay Charge Aid Affairs, magandang madaling araw. Uh, the committee resumes consideration of Senate Resolution 131 and begins its consideration of Senate Resolution 631. Uh, with uh, acknowledging, first of all, the presence of Senator Aimi, uh, my faithful, our faithful participant in these hearings since a year ago, uh, and our other colleagues who, when I see them come online, I will uh, gratefully uh, acknowledge. Um, I know, for example, also Senator Joel will be joining us and possibly other colleagues. Mga kaibigan, uh, hindi lang po ang quarantine ang nag anniversary ngayong Marso. Para sa kumiting ito, isang taon na rin ang investigasyon dito sa nabisto nating pastilla scam noong 2020. Kung noon, sinilasap natin ang inbound modus ng mga korap na miyembro ng Bureau of Immigration, ngayong 2021, ibubulgar naman natin ang kanilang modus na outbound pastillas, ang pagtatraffic papalabas ng bansa ng mga manggagawang Pilipino, lalo na ng mga kababaihang domestic workers. Ayon sa ating mga sources, 50,000 pesos kada ulo ang padulas sa mga agent ng BI. May hawak rin kaming ebidensyang nagsasabi na tila ang mga nasa likod ng inbound pastilla scam ay ang parehong mga taong nagkakasa ng outbound modus. Malinaw na isa na itong ganap na business model kung saan nambubudol sila ng kapwa Pilipino na ipadadala sa ibang bansa para maging alipin. Noong nakaraang linggo, nabalitaan po ninyo siguro ang kwento ni Alice, isa sa mga domestic workers na pinalusot sa mahiwagang counter number one sa airport. Hindi niya alam na sa Syria pala siya dadalhin ng kanyang mga recruiter at ibebenta sa amo. Ang sweldo niya doon ay $200 a month lamang malayo sa unang napag-usapang sa sweldo niya. Naikwento din sa amin ni Alice ang pangmamaltrato ng kanyang employer na kaya raw malakas ang loob ay kamag-anak daw ng politiko sa Syria. Marami pang mga kababayan natin ang nasa sitwasyong tulad ng kay Miss Alice. Bilang patotoo, pakinggan natin mamaya ng konte ang salaysay ng iba pang mga kababaihang nakausap ng aking opisina. Mga babaeng napasabak at nananatili sa Syria dahil na rin sa pangangailangan. Pero bago po iyan, uh, Comsec, can we please first acknowledge uh, all the resource persons. Good morning, everyone. Uh, the committee would like to acknowledge the presence of the following resource person. We have uh, from the Department of Justice, we have Undersecretary John Paolo B. Salbahan. We have Assistant Secretary Nicolas Felix T. Attorney Yvette Coronel. Then from the DFA, we have Undersecretary Sara Lou Ariola, Assistant Secretary Enrico Foss, Special Assistant Jerry Ozayas, Principal Assistant Armand Dulay, Deputy Assistant Secretary Maika Magnolia Fisher, Director Rafael Hermoso, Shorsha Fair Bida Zaria Versosa, we have Director uh, Jean Jason Ariola, and we have uh, Glenn Joseph Dite. We also have assist, Special Assistant Iris K. Kalao. From the NEI, we have Attorney Emerico Dongalo Jr. Then from uh, the Bureau of Immigration, we have Commissioner Jaime H. Morente. We have Ms. Maria Timotea Bariso. We have Mr. Dennis Alcedo. Then we have uh, the witnesses, Mr. Allison Chong together with, he, uh, with he, her, his lawyer, attorney Tristan Toriano. Then from the Bureau of Immigration, we have Mr. Arlan Mendoza. That's all for now, Madam Chair. Thank you. Madam Chair. Thank you, Comsec. Yes, and Aimee. Yes, just by way of my housekeeping, I had a very similar uh, resolution. It's a uh, resolution uh, 627 
also directing uh, the committee um, to conduct an inquiry into the alarming reports of human trafficking uh, and imprisonment in Syria. However, I think it was um, uh, referred to the Committee on Labor as opposed to your committee. Perhaps uh, since the topic is the same, we can request, if not for joint referral, um, the referral to the committee which first took notice, which is your committee. Part. Thank you. Thank you so much also, uh, Sen Aimi. Um, perhaps we can take this up immediately with the majority leader uh, as the honor. chair of the Committee on Sorry. Rules uh, regarding this. Um, and and keep at the back, at least at the back of our minds, this committee, uh, this Senate Resolution Six Two Seven. While we are proceeding in this hearing, and perhaps we can also seek the uh, wisdom of Sen Joel when he arrives at this hearing, since he is our chair of the Committee on Labor. Thank you for that, uh, Sen Aimi, and well noted. Uh, yes, I heard someone asking to be acknowledged at this point. Uh, Your Honor, or, uh, good morning. Uh, who is this, please? Sir? Erwin Ortanez. Erwin Ortanez. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, uh, Sir Erwin Ortanez. Uh, I wish to be acknowledged. Po. My name was not called in the role call. I see. I apologize for that, uh, Sir Ortanez. Yes, uh, you are officially acknowledged by the chair. Comsec, please include Mr. Ortanez uh, in our list of resource persons. Thank you, sir. Uh, also, for, for the record, uh, speaking of our witnesses, I believe we have also in attendance uh, Dale Ignacio. So, thank you. Uh, and Senator Cynthia is here also. Salamat, uh, Sen Cynthia, sa inyong pagdalo. All right. Uh, ngayon po ay pakinggan na po natin uh, yung mga salaysay uh, ni na Ms. Belen at saka Ms. Carol. Okay. <laughs> Okay. 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 Pero ano yung instruction sa inyo para doon sa kung anong gagawin niyo sa airport? Meron bang ganun? Hi, ako si victim ng illegal trafficking. Biktima ng mabulat-lap na pangako ng agent namin. 
at mga kusya ng sahod daw namin 500 to 600 dollars at magkasama kami ng kapitbahay ko kami dalawa daw sa bahay dito sa Damascus pagdating sa Damascus hindi pala nakalusot na kami sa term, sa Naiya Terminal 3 noong August 7, 2019 uh, sinunod talaga namin yung go signal ng patsat namin na si Jess uh, galing naman sa Dubai sa na doon daw kami magpila sa counter number one na nakamas. Kunyari, napil up kami ng form, pero pagdating doon, binasura lang. Tsaka na-stay kami sa Dubai ng 8 days or 9 days ba yun. Tapos nagpunta naman kami dito sa Damascus. Pagdating dito, para kami preso. Pinulong kami doon sa competition. Tapos kinabukasan, nagpamilitan kami, bininta na kami yung kakasama ko na sinabi na makasama kami sa isang bahay last na kumikita yung nakuha ako hindi po namin na sana yung taga immigration bantayan ng goberno natin kasi yan sila mga ano yan sila angal ng pera pinabayaran yan may mga contact yan sa ibang bansa sa mga PK na mga agency sa mga PK na mga agent Marami palaking pira na ang matatanggap nila kaya sana pabantayan na sila at tanggalin sila sa trabaho. <laughs> Mahal na Presidente, sana wala nang makapasok dito sa Syria. Sana ibantayan niyo po yung immigration. Hiningi po namin ng tulong na kami nandito sa employer na mapawi po kami ang gustong umimik. Sana po, sana po na mapansin niyo yung hinalain namin na nandito pa sa employer. Maraming salamat po. Ayon sa admin office ng POEA Balik Manggagawa, nakasailalim sa total ban ang Syria mula pa noong 2014 at may mandatory repatriation para sa lahat ng OFWs doon. Pero hanggang ngayon, nasa Syria pa rin si na Miss Alice, Belen at Carol. Kaya ngayong umaga, mga kaibigan, ang maglalahad sa atin ng kanyang karanasan ay si Ms. Diana, isang domestic worker na naloko ng sindikatong kasabwat ang mga tauhan sa BI. Napadpad rin siya sa Syria, ngunit nakahanap ng paraan na makauwi dito sa Pilipinas. Hindi lang pera ang pinag-uusapan dito, kundi pati prinsipyo, pagkatao at dignidad ng ating mga overseas Filipino workers. Magandang umaga sa iyo, Diana, at salamat sa pagkakataong ito. Salamat sa pagdalo at sa pagtulong sa amin upang tuluyan ng matuldukan ang bastos na pamamalakad sa ating mga airport. Uh, maari ka nang magpakilala at magsimula ng iyong kwento. Um, good morning po sa inyong lahat. Uh, itago niyo Diana, niyo sorry Diana, bago ka lang magpatuloy, Comsec, paki-administer lang ang oath kay Miss Diana para official yung kanyang testimony ngayon. Um, sec, naka-mute kayo. And repeat after me. I. Diana, pakitaas lang. Diana, kamay. pakitaas yung iyong kamay. At uh, repeat after me. I. Please take uh, your name. I, Diana. Do solemnly swear. Do no. solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That to tell the truth. That to tell the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. To this committee. To this committee. Okay, thank you. Madam so, Chair. Salamat, Diana. Yes, salamat, Comsec. At Comsec, paki-administer din ang oath sa iba pang resource persons na hindi pa under oath bago ko pasalay sa INC, Ms. Diana. Okay. Uh, may I call those who do not take their oath yet to please raise your hand and repeat after me. I, please take your name. I. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. 
to tell the truth. To tell the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. Nothing but the truth. To this committee. To this committee. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Maraming salamat sa ating mga resource persons. Sa uh, salamat, Comsec. So muli, Diana, maaari ka nang magpakilala at uh, magsimula ng iyong kwento. Itago na lang po ako sa pangalang Diana. Ako po ay 31 years old at tubong Dinagat Island. Ako po ay narecruit kasi may nakilala akong babae dito sa may baklaran. Nag-alok siya sa akin ng work sa ibang bansa. Hindi niya sinabi sa akin na Syria. Noong July 6, 20, binanggit niya sa akin na Dubai, Asia, pero hindi niya binanggit ang Syria. Noong July 6, 2017 ang flight ko. Dalawa kami ng isa pang babae. May minimit kami sa Jollibee Baklara ng taga-agency na nagpapakilalang mambet, binigay niya sa amin ang passport namin at nagbriefing kami. Sinabihan ako na pagpasok ng immigration, antayin ko ang text niya kasi hindi kami pwedeng magkamali ng pasok ng counter. At through text, tinuturoan ako ng taga-recruitment agency kung ano ang dapat gawin, step by step. Sinabihan ako ng babae ng nasa counter, hindi ko lang maalala kung ano ang number ng counter. Pagdating ko ng Malaysia, may nagsundo sa amin na isang contact ng recruitment agency. Dinala ako na sa bahay na napakadaming mga babae na nag-aantay ng visa. Nagtagal ako ng dalawa at tatlong linggo sa Malaysia. Noong nandun ako, naisama ako ng ilang bisis ng agent sa money remittance. Nung, tina- nung tinanong ko siya kung para saan ang pera na ihuhulog namin, nagamit ang pangalan ko, sinabi niya na para ito sa recruiter at pambayad sa contact sa immigration. Noong nasa Malaysia ako, naramdaman ko na parang mabigat ang pakiramdam ko. Hindi na din ako dinadatnan. Nag-request ako ng pregnancy test pero di nila ako pinayagan mag-test. Nung dumating, ako, nung dumating ang visa ko, lumipad na ako papuntang Syria. Nag-medical exam kami. Pagdating ko sa Syria at doon ko nga nalaman, nabuntis ako. Nagmakaawa ako, napauwiin ako, pero hindi ako pinayagan. Sinabihan ako kung kaya ko ba daw bayaran ang ginastos namin sa kanila. Ayaw ko pa talagang mag... Ayaw ko po kasi talaga nung ano, magpalaglag, pero halos, halos muntik nila akong saktan at saka sabalim. Wala na akong magawa kundi inumin yung gamot na binili sa akin na isang saitotit sa bunganga at sa puerta. Nakabantay kasi sila yung agency at monitor nila ako kung inumin ko yung gamot. Pagkatapos noon, pinatingin lang ako sa doktor tapos isang araw ang nakalipas, bininta na ako sa employer. Actually, dinodugo pa din ako at ang sakit-sakit ng pakiramdam ko. Gustong-gusto kong tumakas pero hindi ko magawa kasi sa dami ng, ang dami kong naranasan hira. Tumawag ako sa embassy ng Pilipinas pero hindi naman nila ako tinulungan. Mamamatay ako sabi ko sa kanila pero sabi nila hindi basta-basta makapunta ang agency. Ang embassy kasi mapapahamak daw sila. Nagulat din pala ako nung malaman ko na ang sahod ko ay $200. Kahit ang kontrata na pinirmahan ko ay $400. Two years ang nakalagay na kontrata pero naging three years. Sobrang hirap ang pinagdaanan ko doon sa loob ng Syria. Nasabi ko sa sarili ko na ayaw ko na talaga doon kaya ako ang gumawa ng paraan para makauwi sa Pilipinas. Naawa yung kaibigan ko kaya pinahiram ako ng pera para pamasay paawi dito. Nakapunta ako ng embassy kasi expired ang passport ko at nakita ko doon ang nakausap po sa phone tauhan ng embassy. Hiningi, nahiningian ko ng tulong pero nagawa niya akong pagtawanan. Pagdating sa Pilipinas, hirap na hirap ako kasi wala akong natatanggap na tulong mula sa gobyerno. Yung isa kong kakilala, nakababalik lang din galing Syria. Sinabihan siya na walang financial assistance dahil hindi naman kami documented. Kaya ganito po ang kalagayan para duple-duple yung pambibiktima. Mm-hmm. 
Marami po akong nakilalang mga kababayan namin natin sa Syria, mga Pinay din na kagaya ko na naluloko at napasok sa Syria dahil sa mga sitikato ng mga immigration, mga agency, na mga walang puso, mga walang puso po sila. Malimit po ay sinasaktan, walang tulog, walang, walang pagkain, walang kinakain. Example po si Maritis Pantonal na pinakulong ng amo matapos humingi ng permisyong makaog sa Pilipinas dahil namatay ang kanyang asawa at saka yung nanay niya. At kasi ang nasa isip ng mga amo namin, binili nila kami ng $10,000. Kaya pwede nila gawin kahit anong gusto nila. Kaya ako po ay bukong puso na kumahalap sa sainit herring na ito para matigil na ang pagpapadala ng mga Pilipinas sa Syria, mga illegal recruiter ang corruption sa Bureau of Immigration at higit sa lahat ang pambibiktima, pambibiktima at pang-aabuso sa amin ng mga kapit sa patilim lang. Tulungan niyo po ang mga kapwa Pinay natin doon. Madam Senator Isa Montivero, salamat po. Maraming salamat sa iyo, Diana. At sorry, sorry talaga sa lahat ng pinagdaanan mo, lalo na yung pilit ka pang pinalaglag at lahat ng pinagdaanan mo. Sorry talaga kung, kung pwede ka lang yakapin ng aming komite. Kung maaari, mag, may tatanong na sana ako sa iyo na mga follow-up questions at malamang yung mga kasama ko dito sa komite para lalong maging malinaw kung ano ang sitwasyon at lalong maging malinaw din sa isip namin lahat nagtatrabaho sa gobyerno. Anong dapat gawin para makatulong sa iyo? Okay lang ba, Diana? Tatanungin pa kita ha, ng mga follow-up questions, okay? Okay. Um, kung alam mo sa simula, simula pa na sa Syria ka pala papunta, papayag ka ba noon? Hindi po. Hindi. Kung alam mo na $200 lang ulat sa Paul ang sisweldohin mo, papayag ka ba? Lalong hindi po. Lalong hindi. O yung ganyang mga termino, lalong hindi. Sabi mo rin kanina... Diana na marami kang nakilalang mga Pinay doon. Binanggit mo pati si Marites Pantonal. Pare-pareho din kaya ang nararanasan ninyo sa immigration na pinapalusot kayo sa airport. Uh, gusto ko kasing malaman kung kalakaran na ba ito noon pa. 2017 nagsimula itong karanasan mo eh. Ganyan din ba ang pinagdaanan ng ibang mga Pinay na nakilala mo na dumaan sa airport at pinalusot? Ganyan nag anyan din po. Ganyan kasi talagang nakaano kami. Binibriefing kami. Pinapadaan kami sa isang counter at yung immigration binabayaran yun. And doon ako at alam ko dahil iisa ang mga sinasabi namin doon sa Syria, ang mga kasamahan ko doon. Kaya alam ko na bayad ang immigration. Sila yung isa sa mga 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 ano mukhang pera dito. Sila po talaga yon. So pinag-uusapan ninyong mga Pinay na dumaan sa ganitong karanasan, pinag-uusapan nyo sa Siri at pare-parehong mga karanasan, pare-parehong steps ang pinadadaan sa inyong proseso. Ganun po. Okay, Diana. Gaya ng sinabi ko kanina, Diana, nagulantang talaga ako dun sa kwento mo tungkol sa pinit, pilit kang ipinalaglag. Sigurado ko hindi ito madali no? bilang kapwa-babae mo, kaming lahat na kapwa-babae mo rito, bilang kabara mo, sigurado ko hindi yan madali. Ano ang maaring mangyari sa iyo noon sa tingin mo kung sakaling sinabi mo at ipinilit mo na ayaw mong magpalaglag? Siguro um, um, na, siguro nakauwi po akong ano, siguro malamig na bangkay kung lumaban ako sa kanila. Ganon ang naramdaman mo na banta sa buhay mo mismo Opo. kung hindi ka papayag magbalaglag? Opo. Yung mga recruiter mo ba, Diana, anong, anong lahi sila? Mag, at magkakilala ba yung mga re recruiters mula dito sa Pilipinas hanggang dun sa Malaysia kung saan ka nag-stop over ng ilang linggo hanggang dun sa Syria? Magkakakilala ba itong lahat? Magkakilala po sila ma magkakilala po sila kasi iisa lang yan isang isang grupo sila kasi kahit yung agent ko sa Malaysia kilala nila yung immigration ibig sabihin dahil kilala nila iisa lang silang lahat pero yung agent sila yung agent mo sa Malaysia Malaysian siya pero kilala niya yung taga rito oh, sa immigration oh, sa Pilipinas oh, oh. at kilala niya po opo oh, 
Nabanggit mo nga Diana si Marites Pantonal. Maari mo ba siyang ikwento sa komiteng ito? Ako okay po. Si Ate si Marites Pantonal po, isa po siyang ano din katulad ko. Ang nangyari po ano, sinasaktan din po kasi siya doon. Yun nga, ang nangyari sa kanya, ipinakulong ng amo kasi at lalong pinagbintangan siyang magnakaw ng pera. Kaya hanggang ngayon, 2019, nasa kulungan pa rin po siya, kaya humihingi po siya ng tulong, sana matulungan po siya kasi wala po siyang kasalanan dun eh. Pinagbibintangan siya ng amo niya, magnanakaw sa mata na hindi siya pinapastahuran. Yan po, yung ano niya, nasa loob siya ngayon ng kulungan ng seria. Na walang iba na makatulong. Mula pa 2019, so dalawang taon nang nakakulong. Opo, ma, matagal na siya doon sa loob, ma'am. Kasi inaakustahan nga siya ng amo niya. Na sinaktan niya na kuno, kunwari yung amo niya. At tapos ang nangyari, binaliktad siya. Siya yung nanakit sa amo niya. Samantalang hindi siya pinapasahuran ng amo niya. Ngayon, pinakulong siya ng amo niya. Nasa loob ng, kul nasa loob ng kulungan, ma'am. Wala pong makatulong sa kanya. Then Diana, ikaw na yung unang makakatulong sa kanya at sigurado ko marami kami dito kung hindi man lahat na kasama mo dito sa pagdinig ay pagtutulungang tulungan si Marites Pantonal. Babalikan po natin siya maya maya konti. At sabi mo Diana na may mga nakakausap ka ng mga Pilipino doon. Ano pa ang kalagayan ng ating mga kababayan natin doon na nagtatrabaho rin sa Syria kung meron kang gustong idagdag? tungkol sa inyong sa kanilang sitwasyon. Ma'am, ang masasabi ko talaga, ang buhay ng mga kababaihan natin na nandoon sa Syria, hindi po talaga maganda. Lalo na lalo talaga silang nahihirapan ngayon kasi lalo na ngayon ang sahod nila 200 dollars tapos hang, ngayon pinapahirapan sila, hindi sila makauwi dahil diyan sa corona. Yung iba diyan tapos na yung kontrata nag 3 years na mahigit pero hanggang ngayon hindi makauwi kasi yung mga aho nila katulad ko, hindi nagbibigay ng pamasahe. Ay ang mahal ng pamasahe. Yun po, na na-stuck na sila sa ano, sa ano sa Syria. Yun po, kailangan nila ng tulong at kailangan nila matulungan doon. Kasi kawawa sila, hindi sila kumakain, hindi nakakatulog ng mga ayos. Yun po ang buhay na doon. At sabi mo, Diana, lalong hindi sila nakakauwi dahil sa coronavirus. So dahil may pandemic, lalong nagkakaroon ng dahilan o pagdadahilan Opo. yung mga employer nila na hindi sila pauwiin sa tamang panahon. Hindi tama po yan. Yun po yung nangyari din sa akin. At hindi natin dapat payagan na yung pandemic na dagdag pahirap nga ay lalong maging dagdag pahirap sa mga nahihirapan at pinahihirapan sa Syria. Yeah. Sana makuha sila, matulungan po sila. Dumadami, Miss Diana, yung mga tao at ahensya na ilalaan ang sarili para magawa po iyan. Kaya malaking tulong talaga sa kanila yung iyong pagharap sa aming komite ngayon, Diana. Kaya ako'y paulit-ulit na nagpapasalamat sa iyo. At, at uulitin ko rin lang, Diana, no? pa para lang... Uh, on the record talaga dito sa komite, official, formal, paano ka nakasisigurado na kasabwat, kasabwat ang immigration natin dun sa sindikato na nag-recruit sa iyo papuntang Syria? Ma'am, wala po. Hindi kami makakalabas dito sa Pilipinas kung hindi kami dadaan ng immigration. Ibig sabihin, kung wala po, kung hindi po kasali yung immigration, Ma'am, panigurado, isa po akong nakalabas sa ano sa Pilipinas, bayad sila ng mga tauhan sa mga kalukuhan na ito. Number one, yung immigration, yung agency na yan, mga mukhang pera sila, tandaan, iisa sila. Kaya alam ko sa sarili ko na isa sila sa mga gumagawa ng kalukuhan dito sa ating ekonomiya. Sila lahat, sila ang dahilan ng mga ito. Okay, marami salamat, Diana. Um, huwag ka muna aalis ha, Paki stay on dito sa ating hearing dahil sigurado ko uh, yung ibang mga kasama ko ay may itatanong din sa iyo at mababalikan ka rin namin ang mga tanong pagka nakapagsalita na yung ibang resource persons natin. Maraming salamat sa iyo, Diana. Mabuhay ka. Salamat po. Ngayon na, is ko pong itanong. Ah, may I acknowledge the presence of Sen. Joel. Sen. Joel, salamat sa iyong pagbralo. Thank you, Madam Chair. Appreciate it. Thank you Thank very, you very much. much.
Thank you po. Ngayon, uh, tanungin ko po yung ating mga opisyal sa Bureau of Immigration. Uh, Commissioner Morente, kayo po ba ang makakausap namin dito? Yes, yes Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner, uh, ni-request po namin ang uh, Bureau na i-furnish ang kom komiting ito nung pangalan, pangalan nung taong nagtatak sa passport ni Miss Diana. Maari po ba namin malaman ngayon for the record yung pangalan ng taong iyon? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, Madam Chairman, uh, good morning. May I be allowed to give a short manifestation before I answer? Please do, Commissioner, and then please do let us know the name of that person who stamped the passport of Miss Diana. You have the floor, uh, Commissioner. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm really at a loss for words uh, from what I heard sa testimony ni Diana. And I would just like to assure the committee of my personal all-out support to this investigation. Kaisa niyo po ako sa hangaring mapanagot at mapatawan na mabigat na parusa ang sino mang tiwaling kawani ng BI na mapatunayan kasabwat ng sindikatong involved sa trafficking of Filipina women. Ako rin po ay nagpapasalamat sa mga lumalabas at tumitistigo naglalahad ng kanilang pinagdaanan uh, sa Bureau of Immigration at ako po ay sa totoo lang nahihiya sa I am really disappointed and frustrated about the involvement of BI personnel in these nefarious activities. However, I am thankful, Your Honor, that these people are exposed because they give the Bureau a bad name. It is an unfair. Uh, it is unfair also to the many good and committed uh, immigration officers who perform their jobs religiously and faithfully, especially those uh, of our personnel who are uh, involved in the activities of the Interagency Council for Anti-Trafficking. Um, and uh, to answer the question, Your Honor. Uh, Please. You have referred you have referred to us uh, four names. Um, it was uh, checked by uh, Ms. Timi Bariso, uh, the head of my Travel Control Enforcement Unit. I do not know the uh, particular uh, person, but uh, ito yung apat na names ng IOs na naibigay sa akin ng aking staff who were involved in uh, in stamping. Uh, the exit uh, document of four uh, Filipinas that you referred to us. Ah, yes, Commissioner. Uh, uh, Ito po si Miss Diana at si Miss Belen, Alice at Carol na nagbigay po sa atin ng audio files at uh, pinakita po sa ating komite at sa media. Opo. Opo. Uh, ito, Your Honor, ang mga pangalan po ng immigration officers. Hmm. Uh, Mark Darwin Florante Talha. Mm -hmm. uh, John Michael Sichon Angeles, Irvin Mitchell Villamer, Villamer Ortanes, at uh, Maria Nerisa Manio Pineda. Uh, um, sandali po, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt Commissioner, pero familiar sa akin yung pangalang Irvin Mitchell Ortanes. Hindi po ba Ortanes din ang pangalan ng dating TCEU head? sa ilalim ni Red Marinas na sangkot din sa pastillas inbound. Uh, can I check first, ma'am? Yung pala yes, please. Nag, uh, actually, nag, actually uh, commission clear, si yes, Commissioner. Diana Rose Ranoco is uh, Maria Nerisa Manio Pineda. Yes. Siya ba yung disayon na lang? Tama, sir, Tama, Commissioner. Sabi din po ni Miss Diana hmm. na babae yung nagtatak sa passport niya nung pinalusot siya sa airport immigration. So, Nerisa Pineda. Uh, uh, and, Nerisa Manio lang, Pineda. Manio Pineda. And tanungin ko lang, Commissioner, uh, briefly, Comsec, nandito rin ba si ngayon si uh, Erwin Ortanes Present po ba bilang resource person natin? Ito dati? Alam Honor, uh, he is here now. Yes, um, may I, 
Yes, salamat Comsec. Uh, with uh, with your permission, uh, Com uh, Commissioner Morente. Mr. Ortanes, Sir Irwin Ortanes. Kaano ano nyo po itong si Irwin Ortanes? Uh, morning, ma'am. Uh, uh, po. Good morning. Uh, uh, he's my son, po. Anak po ninyo. All right. Well, for the record, uh, uh, colleagues and uh, para sa al alam nyo rin po, Commissioner uh, Morente. Si yes, Irvin yes. Ortanes po ang nagtatak naman sa passport ni Miss Carol. So nagmamatch po itong apat na pangalan na sinabi niyo sa aming komite commissioner dun sa apat na babaeng nagbigay po ng audio file at nagpatutuo dito ngayong umaga sa sa ating komite. Yes, commissioner, would you like to complete your presentation because then I I need to ask the NBI Special Action Unit something about this particular part of your presentation. Commissioner Morente. Ah uh, yes ma'am. Uh, actually uh, ito yung apat yung nabanggit ko kanina. Uh, it, it would be okay for me to uh, mention the names of uh, yung ni-refer ninyo na mga pangalan sa amin po. Or Siguro is it sir. Confidential. Uh, i-gamitin na lang po natin yung kanilang mga alias uh, at this alias. point in time po uh, po. Yes, na yes, lang po yung your honor. Opo. Yes, your honor. I do not have the Sabi alias as, but uh, as I as I uh, mentioned a while ago, yung isa yes. ko si Maria Nerisa Manyo Pineda. Opo. And the second one is uh, IO2 John Michael Sichon Angeles. He is on preventive suspension because of involvement sa pastillas. Yes. The other, the other one, the third one is I O Mark Darwin Darwin Florante Talha, mm -hmm. and uh, yung na mention nga ho na si I O Irvin Mitchell Villamer Ortanes. Mm -hmm. uh, additionally, Your Honor, uh, the Department of Foreign Affairs, uh, Office of Migrant Workers uh, Administration, yes. has referred to us uh, around forty-four names of uh, possible. Uh, trafficked women oh and we have identified also the names of uh, those people those immigration officers who stamped the uh, departure Great uh, clearance to uh, the mentioned Filipinas and they are now the subject also of uh, a fact-finding committee that I created and I have uh, requested also uh, the Department of Justice to uh, help in the investigation of this. Uh, this was referred to us several, in several communications from the Depart Department of Foreign Affairs. That's and, one uh, good thing, Commissioner, na in-identify yeah. nyo na at fact-finding nyo. Yun naman po ang gusto ng komite na manguna ang Bureau of Immigration sa pagtukoy, pag-investiga, uh, pagsingil ng accountability nitong mga uh, tiwaling uh, kawani at opisyal, hindi lang kawani pero opisyal sa inyong bureau. So, mabuti po, mabuti po yung uh, commissioner. We'll yes, please, if you'd like ma. to continue your, complete your presentation. Uh, for the meantime, that would be uh, all, ma'am. Thank and, you. Uh, I would be open to any questions that uh, the committee would uh, like to ask. Thank you. And certainly would would ask you, uh, Commissioner, maraming salamat po. At dun sa nabanggit niyong Department of Foreign Affairs, we will also have some questions for the DFA thanking uh, Secloxin for acknowledging and expressing support for this continuing investigation and for uh, immediately giving notice to our uh, very capable Charge d'Affaires in Damascus about Mo most importantly, assisting our Filipina women there. At yung pagbanggit nyo rin po sa DOJ, gayon din po appreciation to the department uh, sa kanilang early interest no, sa pag-silip uh, pag, uh, dito sa outbound trafficking bound for slavery. At yung sinabi ni Sec Guevara, nalaan din sila na uh, bigyan ng hustisya yung mga victim survivors. And once and for all, in support of the Bureau of Immigration to crack down uh, on this syndicate. Uh, para po sa NBI Special Action Unit, kaugnay nung presentation ni Commissioner Morente, uh, Attorney Donggalio, Attorney, could you tell the committee please, dito sa mga pangalang binanggit, Mark Darwin Florante Talha, John Michael Sichon Angeles, 
Irvin Mitchell Villame Ortanes at Maria Nerisa Manyo Pineda, sino po dito ang charge na rin ng NBI para sa pastillas inbound? Uh, uh, good morning po, Madam Chair, at good morning, good morning. sa fellow resource speakers. Uh, yes, ma'am, uh, binerify po natin the moment uh, Commissioner Morente uh, mentioned the four names, ano, uh, I, read, I immediately checked our file at confirmed po natin na ito pong si John Michael Angeles po ay na-file po natin doon po sa Pastillas. Okay. Okay. I okay. believe uh, suspended po siya dyan, no? Okay. Nang Ombudsman. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. So, salamat, uh, Attorney Donggalio. So, pinailan nyo ng kaso si Mr. Angeles, among others. Sinuspende din sila without pay for six months, if I remember correctly, ng Office of the Ombudsman para kaugnay po ng pastillas inbound. At ngayon po, so far sa testimonya ni Ms. Diana at presentation ni Commissioner Morente, eh, siya rin po ay... Uh, nagmumukha talagang kasama pati sa pastillas outbound. So sinasara po natin ang loop nitong nagmumukhang iisang sindikato, nagta-traffic inbound at outbound for bribes at para sa what amounts to modern day slavery sa sa ibang bansa. I hope attorney nag-take note din po kayo dun sa sinabi ni Commissioner Morente na merong silang 44 names pa na na-identify in partnership sa DFA uh, na nag-stamp or rather 44 other women, Filipina women na pinalusot sa BI, stinamp ang passport at ngayon nasa katulad na napakamiserabling kondisyon tulad ni Miss Diana noon at si na Miss Alice hanggang ngayon and dahil kayo naman po ay kaugnay sa DOJ and you have NBI has been so proactive on uh, in partnership sa inquiry na to in the past many months at uh, may, may interest din in express si Sec Guevara dito sa outbound trafficking I hope attorney the committee can continue to count on you na to work together with your fellow executive agencies and departments para maging mabunga naman para sa ating mga kababayan itong mga napag-aalaman namin sa kumikin. Yes ma'am. Uh, Thank you. Uh, kami po ay makikipag-ugnayan kagad sa opisina po ng ating kagalang-galang ng Commissioner ng Immigration at kay Ginang Timi Bariso para po sa kakulang mga dokumento at iba pa pong informasyon. Kayo po ay makakaasa na agad po namin itong maaksyonan at kami din po ay nagpapasalamat sa pag surface ni Diana at malaki pong tulong ito. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat, Attorney Dongalio. Gusto ko naman tanongin yung ating original whistleblower, si Alison Alex Chong. Alex, um, paalala ko lang sa komite, sinabmit mo, Alex, itong mga Viber screenshots sa opisina ko. Uh, ipakita ko lang dito. Ayan, pinapakita na ngayon. Pwede mo ba, Alex, ipaliwanag itong mga screenshot na ito lalo na itong nakakwadrado ng pula, just for the record. Anong paliwanag sa mga ito? Alex? Alex, baka nakamute ka. Hindi kita makita sa screen ko. Pero... Ayan, uh, Madam Chair, naririnig. Yes. Naririnig na. Alex, anong paliwanag dito sa Viper screenshots na ito? Opo, yung una po sa lahat yung screenshots na yan ay nanggaling po sa Departure Pastillas. Departure. Na nakasali po ako dyan for a limited amount of time. At dyan okay. po na nakuha yung mga evidence na yan. Mm -hmm. uh, yun pong tamang uh, naka-highlight po ng red. Yes. Oh, this first picture, EY421, yan po yung flight. Example po, Etihad po yan. Etihad, okay. so bound to Middle East. Tapos mm -hmm. yung FM, la, wala, lahat naman po kilala kung sino po yung FM sa BI. Fidel Mendoza. Si okay. Ito yung parang Fidel Mendoza na in-identify bilang right-hand man ni Red Marinas. Tama? Tama po, Your Honor. Alright. Siya po yan. Siya po ang may hawak. Siya po ang, uh, sila po actually ang may hawak mm -hmm. ng uh, Sir Pastillas. Isang grupo lang din po. Mm -hmm. 
So, pinapatotohanan mo yung impression ni Miss Diana na isang grupo ito mula dito sa Pilipinas hanggang pa sa ibang bansa. Tama po, Your Honor. Iisa lang po. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, talagang lutang yung ano eh, yung initials na FM. So, yun pala ayon sa iyo si Fidel Mendoza, yung kanang kamay ni Red Marinas. At tatanungin ko sana kung paano mo na obtain no itong screenshots na ito sinabi mo na rin kanina lang na nakasali ka for a limited amount of time dito sa Pastillas uh, outbound no So just to reassure you Alex ano covered ka pa rin ng legislative immunity bilang witness sa aming uh, komite at uh, na ipasok sa witness protection program ng gobyerno. Can you tell the committee no mula sa vantage point ng isang immigration officer? Ah, uh, paano ginagawa? Paano actually ginagawa yung outbound trafficking? Ang gusto nating gawin dito, Alex, ay uh, pagtagpuin talaga yung account ni Miss Diana na trafficked woman sa account ng isang immigration Uh, officer. So, paano mo pagtatagpuin yung ito yung, yung sa kaalaman mo paano ginagawa yung outbound trafficking doon sa sa laysay kanina ni Miss Diana? Opo, your your honor, based po on my uh, personal knowledge and lahat po ng evidence that I have gathered as well as yung experience ko po as an immigration officer, uh, isasummarize ko lang po. Mag-start po yan sa From the point of the immigration officer po na nasa airport, imimit po yan sila sa isang lugar. Halimbawa po, uh, ang naririnig ko po palagi sa MOA, tapos yung iba naman po sa Baklaran, or yung iba nga po is uh, anywhere po malapit sa airport. And then pagdating po nila sa airport, halimbawa sa Terminal 1, uh, Speaking of Terminal 1, Alex, anong ibig sabihin ng group name na T1 dun sa taas ng ibang screenshots mo? Y- iyon ba yon? Iyon po, tama po, Your Honor. T1 po, Terminal 1, taas, ibig sabihin departure po na pastillas. Ah, T1 taas, so departure, pang outbound talaga. Pang outbound po. Okay, and you mentioned MOA, Baklaran. Dati kay Miss Alice, mayroong luneta, may... Uh, Robinson's Manila. So, yan yung mga isang lugar kung saan sila kinikita. Tama po, Your Honor. Nagbabago pa po sila ng lugar kasi from what I have heard, minsan nai-entrap din sila. Nai-entrap po sila. So, nagdagiingan. Okay. okay. Please proceed, Alex. Then, after po nun, pagdating po sa airport, pipila po yan sa check-in counter. Makikita po yung Uh, visa niyan, makikita po na na tourist visa or makikita po yan ng visa reader. So kasama po yung visa reader ng airline. May bayad din po yun. Uh, sa pagkak- visa po po, reader ng airline? So airline okay. kasama rin dito sa outbound trafficking? Tama po, Madam Chair. Oh, okay, please proceed. And then, uh, pwede po natin yung ipacheck. May alam po ako noon, na-entrap po ng NBI yon hinuli yung visa reader noon. May case po tayong ganon. Tarunin natin kay Attorney Donggalio mamaya. Please proceed, Alex. Opo, then, then uh, after po ng visa reader, uh, usually po ang kumukuha dyan sa mga passengers, sa mga traffic passengers para syempre baguhan lang po yan sa airport. Hindi po nila alam ko anong gagawin. Ah... Uh, Kinukuha po yan ng Intel, BI Intel. Yung po nagpapapila, sila po yung nagpapastol para po ipapila halimbawa sa, yun nga po, yung na-mention po na counter 1 and 2, departure. So terminal 3 po yan, na iya terminal 3. Bakit po counter 1 and 2? Nasa pinakagilid po yan, hindi po, ibig sabihin, hindi po maliligaw yung pasahero. Sa pagkakadinig ko po kanina, sinabi po nung isang... Uh, Uh, witness natin na naligaw po daw siya so pinalabas muna siya then nung pinag, pinabalik siya sa counter one dire-diretso wala ng tanong tatak ka agad yun po yun yung counter one two dadalihin po sila Alex, 
And Alex, dito sa screenshots din na galing sa EO, ano, na, ano naman or sino naman itong EO? Yung EO po, uh, ayan po, uh, Your Honor, nung sinusuri ko po yan, actually nagulat po ako yung EO na initials. Kasi ang pinakamatunog sa akin dyan yung FM. So nung, nung sinuri ko, Uh, based on personal knowledge lang din, maaari yung EO is uh, an abbreviation sa pangalan ni Sir Erwin Ortanyes. Ito yung amang Ortanyes, ama ni Erwin Ortanyes na nagtatak sa visa ni Miss Carol. Opo, opo. Pero ang, it, ito po, uh, Your Honor, uh, para po mas mapagtiba yung ebidensya natin, ang nagpost po niyan, yung Viber admin na si Chepay, which is... Ano nga ba pangalan ni Chepay? Na, tunay na pangalan ni Chepay. Yung si uh, Immigration Officer Recall Call, na nakasuhan na rin sa, sa inbound pastillas. Uh, I owe Cherry Pie Recall Call. Opo. Uh, so, sir, yung pwede magpatunay dito sa EO. Ba, yes po, Your Honor. Ano po yan? Uh, vi, ano po yan? Viber admin po yan ah, na katiwala po ni Fidel Mendoza. Oh my. So lumalabas pa ulit-ulit yung parehong mga pangalan sa cast of characters. Alright, uh, babalikan po natin yung punto tungkol kay Ms. Uh, Rakol Kol. Uh, in term, okay, so please proceed Alex. So ano, ganun po, Your Honor. Uh, dinala na po ng intel sa tamang pila ni Balok. Halimbawa po, counter one, tapos yung officer po, immigration officer po doon, makikita na po yan, yung ganyan pong list, nasa cellphone po niya, check lang po niya, pag nakita yung pangalan, halimbawa, uh, yan, yung pangalan ng pasahero, pati yung flight number, tatataka na lang niya diretsyo. Hindi na po niya i-screen kung, kung, uh, kung may tama po itong uh, documents galing sa POEA. So, Diretso At sa ta- Alex, si Ms. Chepay recall call, Viber admin, pareho ng inbound at outbound. Tama po, Your Honor. At siya yung pwedeng magpatunay din. Kung yung EO dito sa screenshots ay si Erwin Ortanes na. Tama po, Your Honor. Na si ang EO kung Erwin Ortanes na uh, right-hand person ni Red okay. Marie. Salamat. Please proceed, uh, Alex, kung meron ka pang idadagdag dun sa paano ginagawa talaga itong buong outbound trafficking. Meron po, Your Honor. Tapusin ko lang po yung proseso. Uh, yes. Itinatakan na po yung counter officer. Normally, screen po yan ng TCEU. Ito nga po yung minimension ko na yung TCEU po are like two sides of a coin. Pwede po siyang maging... Uh, maging bantay pang stop ng trafficking or pwede rin siyang maging... Uh, taga-check uh, sila yung pinaka-trusted po eh nasa kanila po may listahan din po yung TCEU pag-check po niyan diretso na po sa boarding gates yung pasahero hindi po yan haharangin whereas yun po yung pinaka-function ng TCEU to double check kung may kung nagkamali nga po yung primary inspector after po noon pagdating po sa boarding gates Uh, ayun po, maghihintay na lang po ng flight yung pasahero hanggang papadala na po sa Middle East. Now, there are cases po na napapabalik yung pasahero. Ibig sabihin po na, na A to A, uh, for whatever reason po, halimbawa, nabasa yung passport or may, may maling date of birth. Pag pinabalik po yung pasahero sa arrival, malalaman din po yun kung ano, kung... Uh, kung kasama nga sa sa kung hindi nga po na dumaan sa masusing proseso ng uh, departure yung pasahero pero dahil nga po yung TCEU din ang humahawak sa arrival ay ano rin bahagi rin po ng syndicate wala po malinis po lahat kahit po may mga repatriated pauuin lang po yun Di ba ang tawag sa ganon bantay sa lakay? Kung dapat magbantay pero sila yung umaatake, sila yung nagsasamantala. Tama po, Your Honor. So, ano po, very 
yung yung business model po ano well well built business model po totoo <laughs> well built salamat marami salamat Alex well built nga pero tignan natin lalo na dahil sa pagtestimonya ng ating mga victim survivors at ninyong mga whistleblowers kung pwede nating uh, tulungan yung ating mga executive agencies i-dismantle itong well-built na business model na ito. Dale, makoconfirm mo ba ang uh, account ni Alex dun sa tanong na paano ginagawa itong outbound trafficking uh, at paano uh, mula sa panig ninyo ng mga immigration officers mapapatunayan din yung iba't ibang punto ng karanasan ni Miss Diana. Uh, good morning po, Madam Chair. Good morning. The resource speakers. Um, although hindi po kasi ako kasali part ng group sa departure, pero based on my personal knowledge po and from what I hear from fellow officers, um, same lang din po. Kung sino po yung nag, namamalakad sa baba, sa taas din po, ganun. Madam Chair? Salamat, um, Dale. Yes, I will acknowledge uh, Sen. Joel just briefly to tell Dale. So, pinatutunayan mo na it made no difference whether dun sa code taas or baba, iisang grupo yung nagpapatakbo nun. Yun yung sinasabi mo sa komite. Yes, po. Salamat, Dale. Yes, Sen. Joel, please. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Sorry, I've, I've been uh, getting in and out of uh, connection here. But first of all, let me acknowledge and commend your efforts in uh, calling for this hearing. Really appreciate it. And of course, we appreciate our resource persons, especially our whistleblowers. Mabuhay po kayo. Uh, may clarification lang po ako dun sa ating uh, mga whistleblowers. No? Una, yung pong uh, group po dun sa Pastillas, uh, klaro na po ba sa inyo yung grupo sa Pastillas na mafia? Sila din yung grupo dito sa trafficking? Uh, the same group po? O may ibang grupo pa yan? May iba-ibang faction ba yan sa Bureau of Immigration? Please, Alex and Dale, sa tanong ni Sen. Joel. Uh, uh, Your Honor, uh, tama po kay isang, isang uh, grupo, isang Kung pag kung iisipin po natin yung sinasabing faction, uh, from the viewpoint po ng mga foot soldiers, kami pong mga nasa front lines, eh, dumarating lang po yung mga listahan dyan po sa Viper Groups tulad po nung ipinakita sa screen natin. Ngayon kung ipipinpoint po natin sila as factions, baka po as suppliers, for example, po EO as a supplier, F as a supplier, uh, yan po yung... Uh, Yung, okay. Hindi ka din po kasi yan, Your Honor, yung okay. uh, yung palakasan po sa loob ng ng, ng ahensya. Ayan po. Yes, uh, I pointed that out because I wanted to to make sure na ma, makita natin lahat yung uh, units, no? yung mga departments and uh, factions dyan para masiguro natin na hindi sila uh, ma, ma spare ito sa investigation na ginagawa natin we make sure na accountable po sila kasi po binanggit po ninyo yung iba't ibang uh, iba't ibang stages no mula po doon sa uh, and I was surprised about this madam chair yung airline companies yung airline visa reader kasali dito no uh, ang unang tanong ko sa sa airline uh, isang airline company lang ba we're talking only about one airline company or several airline companies that uh, uh, that is bound to uh, uh, Middle East. Sa pagkakaalam nyo po? Sa pagkakaalam po namin, Your Honor, several several airline companies po yan. Kasi, mayroon po tayong flights bound to Middle East. Ilan ang flights to Middle East? Daily? Ah, ma marami. So, marami. Emirates. Marami po talaga. Air Oman Air. Okay. Uh, so I hope again na uh, Madam Chair ma-identify natin ito ng uh, ng hindi po uh dito mga airline uh, uh, visa reads sila at nakalusot ho sila because uh, we're going to go after these guys and then yung uh, bit po kanina BI Intel tapos immigration officer tapos ang hindi ko maintindihan yung uh, 
speed o CEU na sinasabi nyo po. Ito po under the Bureau of Immigration din po ito, di ba? Tama po, Your Honor. Uh, Travel Control and Enforcement Unit. During that time po, okay. uh, ang pinaka-head po ng TCEU, si uh, Sir or Tanyes, tapos ang uh, TCEU heads po sa bawat terminal, si Glenn Comia, si... Si, 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 si Bien Guevara at saka si si sino yung isa? <laughs> opo, yeah, anyway, si Binsol ba yun? Den Binsol, opo, the very famous Den Binsol. Tama po your Senator Risa. <laughs> Sa- salamat po, maraming salamat. Uh, Bilib po kami at uh, saludo po kami sa inyo at uh, gusto namin sabihin na may kakampi po kayo dito sa Senado and uh, we will uh, uh, go through this. Hindi po natin bibitawan to dahil uh, napakalaking uh, dagok ito sa ating mga kababayan at uh, again maraming salamat uh, Senator Risa and uh, for this committee to uh, Uh, spearhead this investigation. Thank you again. Uh, we'll we'll ask questions later. Thank you. Uh, yes, of course, and I'm Sorry, I I kahinguli yung mga signal natin. Ang pangalan nito si Senator Joel Payag na manilipat na lang yung aking resolution para sabay-sabay na lang yung hearing at uh, you're ready to call me sa at Tasha uh, ay stuck up pa rin sa walang kamatayan dopil. Yes, and I will confirm that. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Aimi. I am confirming that. Thank you. Salamat, Sen Aimi. At marami salamat din, uh, Sen Joel, uh, para doon. Maalala naman po natin lahat, di ba? Uh, una, yung Blue Ribbon ay tumingin dito sa issue ng POGOs. And then, ang Committee on Labor ay tumingin doon sa issue ng POGOs, lalo na sa usapin ng tax evasion. And then, itong ating Committee on Women dahil sa POGO-related prostitution. At mukhang dito sa pagsusumikap talaga natin, kumplituhin yung kwento, ay talagang ano, nag, uh, nag-vault in yung iba't ibang Senate committees. Kumplituhin yung letrato, tukuyin ng accountabilities, at higit sa lahat, Uh, tulungan yung ating mga kababayan, uh, manggagawat, empleyado man o kababaihan at bata man na magkaroon ng hustisya. So muli marami salamat, Sen Joel, at marami salamat, uh, Sen Aimi. So yun po tungkol sa resolution um, 627. Ngayon po, uh, Alex at uh, Dale, follow-up question lang, no? Um, domestic workers lang ba ang tinatraffic ng sindikatong ito? Or... Meron din bang iba tulad ng yung unang uh, sinisilip ng komite dito sa patapos na hearings dapat sa sa pastillas pati ba prostituted women ay tinatraffic ng sindikatong ito sa pagkaalam ninyo Nakamute kayo Alex Opo uh, your honor uh, sa pagkakaalam ko po ganito ang uh... In fairness po sa mga immigration officers na nasa front line, no? um, ang uh, sinasabi po kasi sa kanila ng mga boss at ng mga admin, lahat yan bound for Dubai. Kahit papuntang Malaysia or papuntang Hong Kong, may connecting flight papuntang Dubai. So, ni hindi po minimension na pupunta sa Syria. So, dun pa lang po, may, may fraud na po within... Within the organization itself, sinasabi po ng mga boss, lahat yan, Dubai naman yan, lahat okay yan, walang mangyayari dyan. When in fact, ayun nga po, uh, pupunta pala sa Syria, yung iba po, matatraffic pala, yun, yun palang iba, hanggang Malaysia lang, yun pong iba, from Hong Kong, uh, may, may mga narinig pa po tayo, yun, yun po palang iba sa Europe, pinapadala through Malta, South Korea, yung uh, oh, yung sa uh, ECC. At yung pinakamatindi nga po namin naririnig is yung uh, sa South Korea, yung nga pong tinatawag na E6 visa, yung uh, entertainer. Yun po yung, Madam Chair, yung tinutukoy nyo po na prostitute. So, ibig, ibig nyo sabihin, dito sa outbound trafficking syndicate na sila rin ang nagpapatakbo ng inbound trafficking, in syndicate na naman, 
meron talaga silang uh, tina-traffic outbound, bound for prostitution, particularly binanggit nyo ang South Korea at binanggit nyo gamit yung E6 visa o entertainer's visa. Uh, as an ex Your Honor, as an example po, uh, based on our personal knowledge, yun po yung pinakamabigat po kasi na visa, yung E6 na iyon. Bakit pinakamabigat? Kasi uh, alam po natin na ano ba, yung E6 po, mag magtatrabaho po yun sa club sa, sa, sa South Korea. Diba? Sa South Korea po, tapos kadalasan, eh, yun nga po, kinukulong po yung mga babae doon, nata-traffic na po sila. Okay, palala ng palala. At binanggit nyo rin, bound for Europe via Malta. So nadagdagan pa tayo ng continent or region na uh, kinakalakal ng mga tiwaling kawani at opisyal ang ating mga kababayan, ng aming mga kabaro. Tama po, Madam Chief. Europe po, kasama. Okay, my God, kulang na lang yung buong mundo. Maraming salamat uh, sa ngayon, uh, Alex at sa Kandil. Ayan, pareho ko, pare, pareho ko minina Sen Ami at Sen Joel na halos sabunutan na ang 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 uh, buhok sa aming mga ulo sa sa ginagawang ito. Um matanong na sa Department of Foreign Affairs. Uh si Yes, yeah, so oh. Ah okay. Bago po sa in a way we'll ni naman save the best for last pero kasi nag, may hinahanap tayong mga solusyon din sa DFA. Tanungin ko muna yung OWA kung maaari. Um, sino pong uh, taga OWA ang uh, ating resource person ngayon? Andito ba si Administrator Kakdak or sino po sa OWA Comsec? Your Honor. Uh, yes, yes from uh, OWA we have uh... Director Jocelyn Hapal. All right. Salamat, Comsec. Director Jocelyn, online na po ba kayo? Ah, yes, ma'am. Nakikita ko na po kayo. Yes, ma'am. Uh, tama po ba, opo, tama po ba, Director, na uh, yung nakarating sa mga trafficked women natin, yung mga victim survivors natin, yung iba nandun pa sa, sa Syria, no? tama po ba na wala silang matatanggap na tulong Dahil sila daw ay di umano'y undocumented? Tama po ba yung Director? Uh, Ma'am, uh, uh, mag thank you very much po, um, Madam Senator, and to all uh, your honors. Um, um, meron naman po tayong tulong para po sa mga trap is uh, undocumented. Especially okay. trap po, they are considered in distress. At sila yes. po ay Pilipino pa rin naman po. Opo. At uh, nakaranas nga po ng, uh, ng ganyan po na, na mga na kondisyon, kaya mas nararapat nga po na tulungan. Mayroon Sama. naman po po. Uh, although po sa OWA, sa batas po ng OWA, OWA app, sinasabi po doon na ang aming mga, ang aming mga uh, programa at servisyo ay para sa mga documented. Uh, pero meron naman po tayong... NRC o yung National Reintegration Center for OFWs. Dito, ito po ay nanggagaling po sa JAA yung pondo. Kaya po uh, kasama po natin binibigyan ng livelihood assistance po ang mga biktima po ng trafficking. And uh, in general, undocumented po. So yung pong mga uh, kababaihan po na lalo na po yung recently yung po eh, na ibinigay po sa amin ni Lastahan, makakaasa po ng tulong na livelihood mula po sa OWA NRC, o. Kalalang madaling panahon po. Yes, Director. Naku, salamat naman sa pagwawasto nyo dun sa unang impormasyon na uh, nakuha ng ating mga uh, witnesses, ating mga victim survivors. Uh, yung opisina ko po will be in touch with you, ma'am, para i-secure po itong assistance na ito para sa ating um, trafficked women. Para hindi naman maging sitwasyon na uh, sila na nga yung nabiktima, sila pa yung walang ayuda. So, okay. ifafala po namin itong sinabi yung livelihood assistance at ano pa bang ibang assistance na posibleng uh, makamit nila mula yes. sa gobyerno. Maraming yes. salamat, opo. Director. Usually, ma'am, yes, we po. arrange po ng uh, psychosocial counseling dahil nakaraan, <laughs> maaaring nakaranas po sila ng trauma. Uh, 
pwede po kami mag-arrange po niyan. Pero doon na po sa mga lugar na kanilang uh, uh, hinantungan. Napansin po namin may dalawa po sa limang inendorso po na nag appear po sa system po namin. Ibig sabihin, mm. sila po ay documented. Documented. Diba? Okay. Opo. So, meron pa, pa rin po kami tulong para doon. Nandun po yung, yung OWA program so po para sa kanila. And uh, initially, opo, opo. ma'am, uh, ang nabanggit po kasi ng staff nyo is financial assistance. Okay. Opo. So, Pero mabuti po po. Po. Yes. Explore po namin kung saan po, po pwede po makapasok. Total umuwi sila during the pandemic times 2020. Oh, Baka kung maaaring mag-apply po yung ibang financial assistance para sa kanila. Then we will salamat to your po. office po. Thank you. Maraming salamat, Director. Anong, lahat at anuman pong assistance nyo sa kanila makatutulong palagay ko. Financial man, yung livelihood assistance, pati po yung psychosocial counseling napaka-importante din po nun. At ma'am, pakitake note po yung sinabi ni Commissioner Morente kanina yung 44 pa po nilang na-identify kasama ang DFA na trafficked women subject ngayon ng uh, uh, in-identify yung yung immigration officers nung 44 na iyon na tumatak sa visas nila uh, passports nila subject of fact finding sana po ma'am ay pwedeng tignan din po ng OWA kung mm -hmm. maka-assist din po kayo dun sa 44 na mga kababayan at kabaro natin yes ma'am definitely ma'am Thank you so much, Director. Uh, yes po. And uh, para, po sa, para po sa Department of Justice, COMSEC, sino po yung uh, pwedeng sumagot? I believe nandito po si USEC. Um, sorry? Si USEC T po ba ang sasagot para sa DOJ? Or... Chair, si we have uh, Elba. Yes, you say. Uh, Comse. We have under secretary under secretary John Paulo Salvahan and uh, assistant right. secretary Nicolas Felix T. And we also okay. have attorney Yvette Coronel. Okay, attorney Sabi Coronel. Kay yes, kayo po bang sa sagot para sa DOJ at iyakat? Or uh, um, good morning. yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, good morning, you say. Kayo po. Assistant secretary T. Po. For, yes, for as for, for traffic related matters for IAPAT, I can answer both, yes. but for immigration matters, for you. music, Salvahan can answer. All right. Thank you so much, uh, ASEC. My, my follow up questions at this point are uh, both regarding trafficking. So, dun po sa kuinento ni Miss Diana at yung mga pinatotohan ng punto ni na Alex at sa Kadale, consistent po ba ito? sa alam so far ng department kung papaano tinatraffic ang mga kababaihan palabas ng bansa. Kung baga, ganito po ba yung modus operandi na napag-aalaman nyo so far? Asik. Um, Meron may, pong very first having ang office ng Madam Chair na dalawang, dalawang kaso ng yes. traffic women. At dun sa, mm -hmm. dun sa base sa mga sa mga interview na to, yun po ang nakikita namin yung modus operandi, no? Na okay. nabuhin silang Meron silang agency na may, mm -hmm. may kinakausap na tag-immigration upang mapadali ang kanilang exit mula sa Pilipinas. Yes, ASEC. And ilan na yung successful prosecutions uh, sa mga BI employees o officials, particularly para sa paglabag sa Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act? I, I mean, specific statistic na yan na yung, yung trafficking cases against BI employees kailangan ko po i kailangan ko po kunin um, we'll just we, we'll, we'll commit to submit that information to you um, before the next year Thank you so much uh, ASEC the committee would uh, really uh, appreciate it and just to just to confirm po no bago tayo dumako sa DFA may POEA po ba dito COMSEC? Yeah uh Well, uh, po bang... we, yes, uh, Madam Chair, we have Ms. Oh, Teresa De Los Santos. Hello. Ms. De Los Santos. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma Teresa, ayan, magandang umaga po. Ma'am, just to confirm po, no, um, tama po ba na may deployment ban to Syria simula pang 2014? Yes, ma'am. Apo. Yes. Tama and there is still a, and there is still a repatriation, uh, 
that is mandatory for our uh, OFWs who are in Syria pa uwi po dito sa Pilipinas. Yes, I believe po, yes, uh, Your Honor, and that uh, with the help of OWA po, no, we are repatriating the workers. Thank you, ma'am. Ifafala po na, ng komite, kayo po, pati ang OWA, para nga po matulungan yung ating mga kababayang pinadal, pinadala doon in violation of a ban at talagang dalawa-tatlong taon na naghihintay ng repatriation. Rescue actually sa kanilang sinapit na napaka saklap na sitwasyon. Yung mga kuinento ni Miss Diana na sina... Uh, yung nasa, nasa preso pa no? si Marites Pantonal and then yung tatlong mga kababayan natin, kabaro natin na nagpadala ng audio um, files no? sina uh, Miss uh, Miss Carol Miss Belen at saka si Miss Alice uh, and baka pwede nyo tignan din po uh, yung sinabi din ni Commissioner Morente kanina, yung 44 na napag-alamat pa nilang traffic women, baka yung iba po sa kanila ay nasa Syria, ganun din pinadala doon kahit may ban at ilang taon nang naghihintay maripetriate dito sa atin Yes, ma'am. We'll do that, ma'am. We'll coordinate with the uh, uh, yes, senator. Thank you. Uh, yes, and Joel, please. Yes, uh, yes uh, may I just interject, no? especially for, for our friends in Dole and the uh, GFA. I, I'm just worried about the the, the other 25, the by 38 yung ni report, tapos 18 yung, ah, uh, 13 yung uh, bin uh, repatriated. So, there's about 25, but uh, according to Commissioner Morente, there's 44. Na-identify na ba itong uh, 44 na ito on the part of Dole and the EFA? Uh, kung nasaan na sila? Ma Maria Teresa, would you like to take that question? Uh, okay, po for uh, for the part of POEA, Dole po, no? we will I will have to confer po with our anti illegal recruitment branch. Sila po yung handle nito to check on the uh, question po ni Senator uh, Villanueva on the names uh, identification of the forty four workers. Uh, po, we will uh, take note of that po. But but right now, meron po kayong mga shelter, no? Ang Dole, meron din ang DFA. Uh, meron po kayo sa, uh, na, na mga kababaihan, kababayan po natin who are still currently in the custody of uh, uh, Philippine Embassy, for example, in Syria or in your, in your shelter, sa Dole Shelter? Uh, sir, I believe Sek, uh, you, Sek Ariola, is the, uh, ano po? Like sa sa Dole po ba, sa shelter po ninyo, wala? Meron, sa shelter. meron po ang OWA na mga welfare centers po natin in uh, some of the posts po natin. Um, um, Secretary Ariola is, ano po, would like uh, to... Uh, be, before we go to Secretary Ariola, uh, my, my only point is that we are taking care of them in the yes, uh, okay. shelter. No? And meron tayong meron tayong uh, grand plan na at the end of the day, mapabalik natin sila dito sa bansa kung gusto nilang umuwi. Ito ba? Opo. So, sa question po ninyo that um, kung meron tayo ngayon sa Syria po, alright, um, ang OWA po would be able to answer that, sir, kasi sila po ang on-site, sila po ang nasa um, no, sila may over, nasa overseas post. Uh, I believe uh, Director Hapal is around. Yeah, baka po pwede lang pong masagot. Kasi mamaya, we'll go to DFA. Yun din yung itatanong natin. Eh. And uh, we also wanted to find out how many of these women have been issued uh, exit visas by the Syrian government. Salamat po. Yes, Director Hapal, could you please uh, take the questions of Sandra Well? Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Senator. Um, uh, since Syria is uh, ang po ay sarado for us, wala po presence po ang uh, Polo, neither Polo nor Owa po ang nasa Syria, unfortunately. But uh, we are willing to 
help in their evaluation, especially in coordination po with DFA. Kung uh, meron pong uh, uh, coordination po sa atin, uh, makakatulong po ang OWA for repatriation. Ma'am Ma Jocelyn, kahit yung hindi po sa Syria, ang ano lang po natin doon sa inyong mga shelters, eh, mapabilis natin yung uh, exit visa ng ating mga kababayan na gusto nang uh, bumalik sa ating bansa. Sana ho ma-monitor natin. Thank yes, you. Yes, thank you, sir. Sen Joel, meron po tayong video ng at least ilan sa mga shelters natin na nag-host ng migrant workers na nag-request ng repatriation dito sa atin. Uh, kung okay po sa inyo, ipakita po natin ngayon sa ating komite. So, please po, please. Thank you. Thank you, Madam yes, Chair. Um, sir, pakiplay po natin yung video. Ah, nasa, nandito pala sa opisina. So, i-share po natin ngayon. Sa Riyadh, Saudi Arabia po ito, St. Joel. Naku, Madam Chair, ilan naman yan? Parang siksikan sila pagkara-irae. Tama kayo, St. Ayan. May, may hiya ang sardinas dito, ma'am. Grabe, o. Oh. Grabe naman. Kailan yan? Sen Aimee, last year po iyan, pero may COVID na. Kaya nakamask po, opo, at nagre-reklamo yung nagsasalita bagamat na under yung audio na dikit-dikit daw sila at parang narinig ko na sabi niya may mga nagkasakit na. Paano naka-uwi na ba yung mga yan? Kawawa naman dahil may COVID na uh, sa ating that's, that's actually my point eh, of, of the questions I'm trying to raise here. Yung mga nandyan na ano ba yung ginagawa nating pagtulong para makabalik na sila. Eh kahit nakamask silang ganun. Uh, sagot sa tanong nyo kay Yusek Ariola na nag, uh, nagre-react din po kanina sa tanong ninyo. Uh, Yusek, uh, could you please take the questions of Sen Joel and also any comments dun sa comments ni Sen Aimi? Good, good, good morning, Madam Chair. Good, uh, good morning, Senators Marcos and Villanueva. Um, as to the pre the presence of the shelter in the, in Syria, the DFA is on its own. We do not have any labor attache. We do not have POLA. We do not have OWA. Because since 2011, there was already a labor ban. Um, Syria is on alert level four, me meaning mandatory repatriation. Um, and so far, I was just talking to our CDA. Uh, we have around 300 Filipinos, household service workers still, who are around the, who are still in the country. Um, as to the other uh, picture that was shown, the other video, in Riyadh, there are two shelters there, Your Honor. One is run by DFA, which is in an apartment hotel. Um, DFA runs uh, a shelter in Lotuston. It's uh, um, it's maganda siya, Your Honor. It looks like um, a condominium unit. Um, but the other shelter, I think, is run by our counterparts in labor. The assistance to nationals... Uh, Cases are with the FA, and the labor cases are with the Department of Labor's shelter, Your Honor. Um, Your Honor, if I may, uh, we prepared an opening statement, Your Honor. Yes, please. But before you present it to uh, our committee, just a quick clarification. Akala po namin ang deployment ban sa Syria mula 2014, pero kinokorek nyo po 2011 pa pala, isang yes, dekada na. Yes, Your Honor, no, because okay. this is the time when the war began, okay. Your Honor. Exactly. And then, has the deployment ban been lifted? It has not, correct? No, Your Honor. It's still... All right. Thank still yes, thank you, Yusek. So please, uh, please uh, show the Madam committee Chair, your presentation. Chair, the Chair, yes, before that, Yusek, send Joel. Just yes, please. Why clarification? Because we don't want to, to miss this... Uh, uh, question. You made mention, Yusek, that there are 300 pa in, in Syria awaiting to be uh, 
uh, repatriated. Ano yung status nila? Uh, they're still currently in the custody of the embassy, right? And uh, how many how, how many of these uh, women have been, been issued exit visas by the Syrian government? And how many are still waiting for visas? Uh, Your Honor, the 300, not not all of them want to come home. Some of them are in the in the homes of their uh, of their sponsors, of their employers. Um, so far, um, the ones in the shelter, I think the CDA can confirm later, are around 34, um, 34 household service workers. But in 2020, we were able to bring home 39 shelter wards. And Your Honor, the um, the, the case of Marites that uh, Senator, the Honorable Senator Antiveros mentioned a while ago. Yes, yes, yes. We, we found out that the employer is asking for $5,000 um, for, for, for release. So the DFA uh, will, be, will have to pay the $5,000. It's against our principle to buy out contracts, but in this case, she will uh, languish in jail. So there are instances that um, the Department of Foreign Affairs have to buy out contracts, although it's not a very good policy because some of the employers take advantage of the fact that the Philippines buys out contracts. And there was a time we even pay as much as $10,000 to $12,000 just to bring home our, our, our people. But uh, in her case, Her Honor, she's still in jail. Uh, she was just visited by the CDA, I think, a few days ago. Um, so, and that's the, and that's what the employer is asking for, but, uh, that's the current situation, Your Honor. Thank you for the visit uh, to Marites Pantonal, Yusek. At sana po, um, kahit as you said, it is not a good policy to buy out contracts. But ang nakataya naman dito ay higit pa sa buying out ng contract as I'm sure the department can see. Ito ay pag-rescue sa kababayan natin who has suffered an, a miscarriage of justice. At tama po kayo, she has languished in fact for two years already ayon kay Miss Diana. So salamat po sa inyong uh, pagtingin sa sitwasyon niya and the committee will uh, continue to follow up with the department na maiuwi na siya uh, hanggat maaga. Salamat, Yusek. Just to so, close Yusek, lang, you Madam, have a present. Yes, uh, Sir just Joel. To close lang, Madam Chair. No? It, so it points out na yung Syrian government uh, treat this as legitimate since the Filipino workers uh, possess valid deployment documents such as contracts and uh, sometimes yung binabanggit na yung ICAMA ba yun, yung uh, parang residency uh, permit and uh, unfortunately uh, yun nga yung nangyayari pag nire-repatriate natin itong mga distressed OFWs na kababayan po natin, the Philippine government had to buy out their uh, contracts no and nakagulat 5,000 to 10,000 US dollars so I hope that uh, we can look into this at uh, masiguro natin na uh, meron tayong magagawa. No? Uh, I think yung isa sa mga solutions dito, yung, uh, yung third country uh, 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 recruitment agency dapat uh, maging liable at uh, accountable sa ating mga kababayan and we should look into this. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you again. Thank you, Sen. Joel. And also for a new and possibly important element dun sa findings and recommendations ng committee in support of uh, the Good Senators Committee on Labor regarding dito sa liability din ng third country recruitment agency. Salamat, Sen. Joel. Um, yes, uh, Yusek, uh, you, have, you said that you have a presentation for the committee. Yes, Your yes, Honor. Just please proceed. Yes, very short opening statement. Uh, um, to the honorable members of the committee, our colleagues in government, um, the Philippine takes pride in its tier one ranking in the recently released U.S. Trafficking in Persons Report. This recognition has been retained for the Philippines for five consecutive years, which allows our serious commitment to fight and eradicate the evils of this crime. However, despite the Philippine government's ban on deployment in Syria, which took effect in December 2011, local recruitment agents have resumed recruitment of Filipino household service workers in 2016 due to the improving security situation of Syria. The Philippine government treats its deployments as trafficking in persons cases, while the Syrian authorities treat this as legitimate since allegedly the Filipino workers possess valid deployment documents such as contracts and sometimes ICAMA, regardless of the circumstances under which they were recruited. Most of these trafficking in persons victims had to leave the Philippines using tourist or visit visas, 
They transit through the UAE, other Gulf states, and sometimes even through Southeast Asian countries like Malaysia before they are brought to Syria. The traffickers are usually Filipinos convince these victims that they will be have better working conditions in Syria than in UAE and other Gulf states. Not knowing any better, the victims are made to believe that the process they are taking is regular and legal. When these household service workers decide to run away from their employers, the DFA encounters problems in getting out them getting out of Syria because of the requirement of exit visas that will be issued by their employers. In order to repatriate them, the Philippine government had to previously buy out contracts of some household service workers. However, the practice has been stopped and instead our Philippine embassy has commenced filing court cases against erring employers and Syrian employers since 2019. Moreover, when I became undersecretary of UMWA, I have become personally called the attention of the Bureau of Immigration. I have met already with Commissioner Morente and the Interagency Council Against Trafficking regarding these practices happening in Syria. My office, has, has, my office has also been utilizing social media to remind the public to be vigilant about trafficking in persons, especially finding of work abroad through the use of visit visas. However, we think, Your Honors, that perhaps the Senator, since you are influencers, would really play a very big role if you could help us in um, information dissemination because um, you would be able to tell our kababayans that uh, of the evils of trafficking in persons. The Department of Foreign Affairs remains resolute in its commitment to bringing our women home from Syria. In fact, we have brought home 27 of our wards at the Philippine Embassy Shelter by, by the end of this week. Our current UDA um, at the Philippine Embassy in Damascus, as for me, Vida Soraya Versosa, is also here with us today. She's a, she is an anti-trafficking in persons expert in his, and is a human rights lawyer. Uh, we are looking forward to answer the questions of the Honorable Committee. Thank you, Your Honors. Thank you, uh, Yusek Ariola, and again, welcome to the hearing to our ambassador, our charge d'affaires uh, attorney, um, Versosa. Um, the, the trafficked women whom we've heard, whether through their audio files or in person, kanina si Miss Diana, uh, they appeared to be saying, or they were saying, na humihingi sila ng tulong sa embassy, pero... Uh, Ayon din sa kanilang pagkaintindi, the embassy's hands are tied and they cannot effect a rescue or magiging in violation sila sa Syrian law. So, eh, pero kailangan makatakas na muna yung ating mga kababayan. Is this an accurate characterization of the problem on the ground? Perhaps uh, Charge Affairs uh, Versosa should uh, take this question. Ganun po ba yung sitwasyon? Ganun po ba yung limitations natin on the ground? Thank you very much for that, Madam Chair. And yes, under the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations, we cannot directly affect the extraction or rescue operations sa household service workers natin na nasa bahay pa ng mga employer. But what we can do is actually write to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, who in turn would refer this to the Ministry of Interior and the Anti-Human Trafficking Department ng Syrian Arab Republic. So I'm very happy to share po na because of our negotiations with the Syrian Arab Republic government, um, yung mga nag-testify po like sina Alice, sina Belen, sina, Di, sina um, Carol at si Diana po ay tinutulungan ng Philippine Embassy in Damascus, Syria. So halimbawa si Alice po ay naka-schedule na po siya at si Belen na uh, pauwi within two weeks because okay. of our negotiations with other recruitment agencies through the process po of dealing with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Mm -hmm. So okay. um, the good news then po is, I guess the system here in Syria, as mentioned by Yusek Ariola, is it is an alert level for post. It's a hardship post. It's a conflict zone. So as you may imagine, we really have to work hand in hand with the Syrian government for us to secure exit visas. Um, so instead of the former practice na pag buy out ng contracts, uh, right now po, one of the new strategies strategies we have explored is actually hiring a Syrian lawyer to file human trafficking mm -hmm. cases even here in the Syrian Arab Republic working with the Ministry of Justice. So we've also been able to develop an innovation, uh, what they call the Syria model, 
wherein we work with the Interagency Council Against Trafficking. So I can see na dyan po si uh, Deputy Exterior uh, event kasama natin ngayon and our mm -hmm. salvahan from the Department of Justice. Uh, but I'm very happy to share na this is the first time that we have done evidence gathering even at our levels of the Embassy. So we have been uh, com uh, completing the complaint of affidavits na nila. So may sinumpaang salaysay sila. And in the sinumpaang salaysay, naka-identify po doon sino yung mga immigration officers, sino po yung mga recruiters, sino po yung mga human traffickers nila sa Pilipinas para pag-uwi po nila, ma-file po na yun sa regular courts and sa administrative justice system po ng Bureau of Immigration. Uh, so I think we've been doing significant inroads sa Philippine Embassy since um, since nag-assume po tayo noong December 20th, 2020. Uh, marami na po tayong napauwi. And out of these people na napauwi po natin, we were able to really do all four pillars of trafficking natin from prevention, prosecution, protection, and partnership under the National Strategic Action Plan po natin ng IACA for 2017-2020. So, part po yun ang proseso na pagpapaliwanag din sa mga kababayan natin na, oo, hindi tayo uh, police, kaya hindi tayo pwedeng sumugod sa mga bahay ng mga employers, but we work with the local police. So, we partner with the local law enforcement dito para kung kakailanganin silang matulungan, then gumagawa po tayo ng paraan para makarating po sila sa shelter. Pero ayon po sa proseso at patas ng gobyerno ng Syria. But, Maraming salamat, uh, Charge de Affairs Versosa, especially for the great news na uh, pauwi na sa loob ng dalawang linggo si na Ms. Alice at uh, Ms. Belen. I have a lot of follow-up questions, but I see Sen Aimee uh, would also like to ask. So please, Sen Aimee, uh, take the first crack. Yes, uh, you've only just arrived in Syria. And uh, because you have a, an Ilocano family name, I follow your Twitter feed. <laughs> Nabasa ko lang na... Uh, ang ikli pa lang ng stay mo doon, but you now have an MOU or are about to sign an MOU with Jay Smadi regarding the transnational crime and trafficking uh, uh, agreements that uh, need to be upheld. Pero do we continue to have the same problem, yung uh, securing the exit visa from the kafil or the employers, kahit may ticket na, kahit uh, bayad na yung mga fines sa immigration department nila? Um, is that MOU in the offing or na pirmahan na? Uh, thank you very much po, Senator Aimee. Justi Agina, and yes, indeed, I'm from Vegan Ilocosur po. Uh, there we go. So, <laughs> um, uh, yes. Yeah, I also so, realized you topped the exam in 2017. So we're following your career proudly. <laughs> thank you very much, ma'am. So, um, uh, Your Honor, regarding that question, uh, we're still in the process of negotiating and signing that MOU. And uh, the nice thing about this MOU, it covers not just human trafficking, but also transnational crime. So yes. other issues not in on, let's say, terrorism or yeah. labor violations, we're also able to put that under the said MOU. But on the issue of issuance of, uh, I guess, the exit visa. The exit permit. Uh, uh, it's 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 Yes, yes. So here, po, it's a kafala system in a way. They have uh -huh. a model wherein the kafil or the employer um, needs to give the the consent. Kailangan may no objection certificate sa immigration department before the exit visa is issued. So now we are working with the Syrian government to change their law to actually remove this kafala system to implement a labor ban for Filipino household service workers and to really state that even at the level of the immigration department, we are requesting that the exit visas would be issued even without the consent of the employer. So this is a bit contentious, but it's part of our yeah. ongoing negotiations with our government. So you have a timeline already so that uh, we can start uh, moving on this uh, effort. For the Memorandum of Understanding, po, we're just waiting for the comments of the department. Um, okay. so in, in addition to the Department of Foreign Affairs, we also work with the Department of Justice uh, because they need to vet and clear the substantive aspects of any agreements that we sign with our foreign counterparts. So once this is cleared, I believe the Syrian side, they're also very optimistic about it, especially since uh, we have negotiated even to the level ng Office of the President nila, and they also agree that it is necessary to enter into such an agreement with the Philippines. Oh, that's great. So, congratulations. And now for the bad news. Anong nadatnan mo nung dumating ka dyan? 
Dahil uh, na-identify ba yung mga personnel na hindi tumutulong doon sa binanggit ni Chairman Risa, yung mga traffic to OFWs na binibintang din doon sa Washington Post article, na-identify na ba sila? At, uh, yes, and I mean... If I may add to Sen. Amy's yes. question, Sharjay Daffers, kasi tulad nung sinami ni Diana kanina, the embassy treated her with callousness, pinagtawanan. So if you could comment on that also together with Sen. Amy's question. I think in relation to that point, um, may I respectfully manifest if we can have an executive session because I believe that the confidential nature of the admin cases that are ongoing right now, it can be interpreted as subjudice. So I don't want to um, impair any investigations on that subject matter. But the quick answer to this is uh, those who have been identified as involved in trafficking cases, I have personally served the removal or the non-renewal of the contracts of the local hire who was identified as part of this. And also the Secretary of Foreign Affairs has recalled five personnel and sent an augmentation team to replace uh, those from the former employees of the Philippine Embassy. So I'm very happy to share na the five-member five team that was brought here. They're all experts in assistance to nationals, and we've been doing a lot of good inroads, inroads with the new team as compared to the previous one. Mabuhay kayo, Sharjay Daffers Versosa. I sorry, Sen Aimee, just to say na mabuhay si Sharjay Daffers Versosa at si Sec Loxin for that, for those proactive actions. And in fact, kung yun lang yung magiging punto ng executive session, baka hindi na kakailanganin. And since the DFA and the Strategy Affairs is already acting on it. But of course, if at any point it is requested by the DFA or other resource persons, the chair is open. Uh, thank you, Sen. Aimee. Please proceed, Sen. Aimee. Wala local hire lang ang sinabi mo? Walang taga-DFA? Yung sa taga-DFA po, um, Your Honor. So actually, there are ongoing administrative cases okay. um, that are filed in the Department of Foreign Affairs. So I believe we have a representative also from the USEC for Administration who can somehow share updates on the said cases. Uh, but from those that I've recommended, Your Honor, um, one has been admonished for the sexual harassment issue. So this one is also part of the recallees who have been um, removed from the Philippine Embassy in Damascus, Syria. The other one po, is also in the Philippines right now. So we, um, I personally did not recommend that he would come back to Syria. So uh, because of my child protection policy that I implemented when I assumed And also, of course, the heightened respect for women's rights here in Damascus. So uh, part of my recommendations were really to conduct fact-finding investigations and uh, crack down on those who are involved in uh, illegal activities. Yes, thank you. We're very aware of the highly sensitive nature of your post and applaud you for accepting this hardship post na uh, batang babae na pupunta sa war zone na uh, sa Middle East. At, uh, um, thank you very much. I uh, I suppose the uh, only other question I would have is the uh, bigger picture. Um, based on your records, that's not necessarily the charge d'affaires, but also our USEC here. Which countries have the highest rates of uh, traffic Filipinos? At this point in time, kasi medyo horrific ang kwento, uh, nakakasindak naman yung ating videos. Um, alin ba talaga ang bansa na pinakamarami yung pinatawag na traffic person? Your Honor, if uh, I may. Yes, please, Mr. Cariola or I don't know if you So far, it's the United Mr. Arab Emirates, Your Honor. Around, I think in 2018, 2019, we had more than like 10,000. Um, because uh, of the big city. 10,000 traffic? Yes, sir. Yes, Your Honor. Because I think it's because of the visit visas. Um, a, a lot of Filipinos will do the shortcut. Uh, they don't want to pass through POEA. Right. And they will um, they will decide to go to UAE and explore employment possibilities. Then they will try to change their status when they get to the United Arab Emirates. The the problem, Your Honor, with that is some of them don't make it or end up as household service workers when in fact they wanted to do something else. So that's why our shelters there are often um, full. But Your Honor, now that we're, we have a bilater bilateral labor agreement with UAE, we also ask them not to convert visit visas to working visas. 
um, because to discourage our people from so, being, being enforced. Actually, we read about the uh, bilateral agreement as well as the uh, contract condition. Are they being enforced properly? Uh, Ma'am, it's uh, your honor. It's going to begin on March 31. Ah, wala pa kaya ang tagal pala before it's uh, implemented. Yes, sir, honor. Uh, your honor, I think that's the we just want to share that that's the reason why we had so many stranded Filipinos in the UAE during the pandemic because they were they they all went there and most of them are irregular or undocumented workers. That's why it was very difficult to bring them home also, but. Uh, that's why this uh, hearing is very important to us because um, I think that the senators would be more credible to really tell our our citizens not to do shortcuts, not to um, not to allow themselves to be trafficked because the consequences are really fatal, and uh, and some of them even end up in another country, not just the UAE. Sabi mo 2018. Ilan na Um, Your Honor will. Uh, Sorry. sorry. Um, in sorry, in uh, in 2019, Your Honor, in United Arab Emirates, 5,690, Hong Kong, 540, China, 508, Egypt, 268, Saudi Arabia, 250, Lebanon, 211, Qatar, 142, Syria, 137. Ano po yung total niyan? Ilan ang total number of traffic Filipinos? Wait lang. You're, I'm not very good with math, Your Honor. We're just computing. Uh, and you said, could you please submit that list to send oh, IMI to the committee yes, para detalyado at saka summed up din, you said. Yes, Your Honor, oh, okay. sir. Okay. Ano yung okay. gagawin? But these are the only numbers that are reported to us, Your Honor. Not necessarily those who, that's not the actual figure, Your Honor. These are the people who asked for repatriation. So we what can't... Action is, sorry. What yes. action has DFA taken, um, for example, to get in touch with the government's concern? Uh, so UAE, sabi mo nga may bilateral labor agreement. I know that Secretary Bellio, for example, was very, very active in trying to get this passed very quickly. Tapos meron kang lista ng Hong Kong, meron kang China. Um, nakikiusap ba tayo dyan dahil uh, ang dami namang traffic na Pilipino at daan-daan? Yes, Your Honor. We've been making representations and uh, most of them also are being helpful to us to in repatriation. But actually, Your Honor, the problem is in some cases, it's really, uh, especially in places that are visa-free, they use, we are... Our citizens use the third country, a uh, uh, third country as a jump off point. That's why they can easily leave the country. And of course, um, for uh, example, so Hong Kong is that uh, what you are referring to as a visa free country? How does it work? Yes, Your Honor, because uh, we, we can easily enter uh, Hong Kong, and uh, okay. and sometimes our our citizens pass through Malaysia, like in in the case of. Uh, one of the traffic victims and get oh, oh, kanina oh, oh kasi ASEAN visa free then yes sir honor are there any specific legislative measures you think would be helpful to address these issues well actually your honor it's a uh, we we just have to make a bilateral agreements that the that they, they cannot convert really the the visas, the visit visas to working visa, uh, to discourage our citizens from doing that. But we have to be also be more strict in our border control because um, there are badges naman talaga who, who is a trafficking in persons victims. Um, actually, like, our last line of defense actually is our immigration because you can see very well that these are not tourists. Um, if you're going to Dubai to shop, why don't you just go to Hong Kong, which is nearer? And um, there are all, also patterns, actually, that a lot of people will just go I think to... That, that appears to be well-established, Madam Music, and uh, we have the whistleblowers present here. We've had uh, endless hearings on the inbound. This is the first outbound. But even there, uh, the pattern, as it were, the business plan is well-entrenched. So... Uh, Yes, uh, that's very, very clear. But that's enforcement. That's not fresh legislation, Diba. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, actually, the, the difficult part here is the right to travel also, uh, Your Honor, because um, we, we don't also want to really encroach on the right to travel of our people. But 
um, I think it's more of information dissemination and also to make it easier the processes of deployment. Uh, I, no, I think the criminals know exactly what they're doing. I don't think it's an information uh, <laughs> uh, failure there. Sorry. Yes, Your Honor. Actually, uh, but by the way, Your Honor, I think to a certain extent, the, the pandemic was able to curb the trafficking in persons because we were really, you know, uh, not allowing people to leave for a while. But the thing is, the ones being trafficked are the ones already in the Middle East region. They're transferred from one country to another uh, because there's really an, a need for household service workers. Actually, in po talaga in demand right now, especially during the pandemic, aside from the medical workers are on. Yes, thank you very much, Yusek. Um, does the charge have any uh, additional information? You seem to be quite creative and innovative in your approach in Syria, a most difficult place. Um, thank you very much, Your Honor. I think the most important thing for us to remember is to really look at it from a trauma-informed care perspective, that when we handle the cases of our survivors, when they get repatriated to the Philippines, the work doesn't stop. We also have to ensure that the cases are filed in court, that they prosecute the traffickers, and they are supported also throughout this process. Because it's easy to just buy a plane ticket for them, pay for the penalties, but That's making right. sure that they have good lawyers in the Philippines who will help them when they test Testify in court uh, for them not to be afraid of pointing out sino ba yung mga dapat managot na immigration officers saka mga illegal recruiters. So I think that's a big part of the value chain that we need to look at on how we can assure them that the Philippine government will be there to help them until the convictions are secured. And really, this scourge of modern day slavery will be ended when we all work together. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's very valuable input. And uh, with my uh, chairwoman with the chair of labor, I think it's important that we provide some sums, for example, obviously to provide legal aid for the uh, prosecution upon arrival in the Philippines, the uh, uh, protection for witness protection uh, programs and uh, the uh, expenses, for example, that are entailed um, and also safeguarding and other protection orders that might be provided. Siguro aralin natin ang maigi sa PWG yan kasi dun nga nagko-collapse yung sistema eh. Walang pile through eh. Iuuwi lang eh. Pero bugbog sarado na nung umuwi. Wala pang pera. Eh talagang uh, wala rin. Hindi lang livelihood kasi eh. Talagang uh, hustisya rin ang habol. Maraming salamat. Thank you po. Madam Chair. Madam, Madam Chair. Madam Salamat, Sen. I mean, yes, uh, Sen Joel, before I call the other person yeah. speaking. Yes, Sen Joel. Thank you. Very short, Madam Chair. No? Uh, first of all, uh, we congratulate the uh, Charge the Affairs uh, Versosa for uh, being innovative and uh, uh, doing her job with passion and compassion. Uh, we can feel your uh, compassion to our kababayans and the buti na lang may mga nasa gobyerno pa na kagaya po ninyo. And uh, of course, we also load the efforts of DFA and other government uh, agencies. I just want to put on record and spread into the records the, the importance talaga of having bilateral agreements. I think uh, uh, si Yusek uh, Sara uh, pointed that out, bullseye po yun. Because imagine, Madam Chair, 2011 pa po itong deployment ban dito sa Syria. And yet, it's still ongoing no uh, yes we load the efforts now we hire a local lawyer para para hindi abusuhin yung uh, Philippine government para magbayad na lang ng at i-buy out yung contract nila but we feel na uh, reactive pa rin po yan eh no passive pa rin na uh, yan dapat talaga meron tayong mga proactive response and uh, one 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 issue that I'd like to point out is the importance of having a bilateral agreement with the host country and I think it will uh, solve a lot of problems that would be more preventive uh, para sa ating uh, uh, mga, mga kababayan na makakaiwas sa trafficking. And uh, siguro yung huling, huling sasabihin ko na lang, uh, kasi si Yusek uh, Sara, narinig ko na baka si Charge the Affairs, eh, may idea doon sa Department of Filipino Overseas. Si, si Manang Aimee, ayan, tumatawa na. Uh, would this help no a, a, a one one department that is uh, laser focused on the needs of our uh, Filipino overseas that that would be all madam chair thank you
Uh, Madam Chairman, may I... Salamat, San Joel. Uh, before I... Well, 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 I can't can 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 you. <laughs> Does <laughs> Yusek Ariola want to comment on San Joel's question? Hindi naman. Ah, all right. Then I'll call, uh, but before we leave, uh, Charge de Affairs Versosa, and I uh, call, I recognize again, uh, Commissioner Morente. Um, talaga, tulad ng mga colleagues ko, no, sina San Joel at San Aimi, I think Charge de Affairs Versosa, hindi talaga nagkamali si Sec uh, Loxin nung ibinilin nila itong isyong ito sa inyo, and he expressed full confidence that you would uh, do something about it. Na impress ako dun sa comment nyo na former practice yung buying out uh, contracts dahil katulad nung ikwinento ni uh, Yusek Ariola parang ang it's a uh, it's a uh, a measure of desperation on the part of our kababayan our kabaro and in a way our government could see that it's something unfair to it as compared with the government of Syria kaya na appreciate ko yung proactive uh, search nyo for other approaches no pati yung pag-hire ng mga local Syrian human rights lawyers and the whole process na in-outline nyo sa atin na should be followed even when our kababayan are already repatriated um, uh, back here. So mabuhay kayo, uh, Charge de Affairs Versosa, uh, in your uh, alert level for hardship posting, no? Be well and stay healthy, no? Mabuhay kayo. Um, yes, uh, Commissioner uh, Morente, I heard you earlier. Yes, sir. Nakamute kayo, Commissioner. Uh, Madam Chair, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Uh, I was listening a while ago to the discussion between uh, Honorable Senator Aimee Marcos and uh, Yusek Ariola, who was mentioning about the modus operandi of uh, exiting uh, international bound passengers, yung tourist workers. They exit the country as tourists. And uh, I would just like to give uh, acknowledgement also to the efforts of nung matitinong uh, immigre, kawani ng Bureau of Immigration who uh, attends to the uh, departure formalities of international bound passengers based on Department Order MC36. Uh, ito, ito yung guidelines na binigay ng iyakat sa amin and uh, just for the record, uh, a total of uh, 112,033 uh, from 2017 to 2020 were deferred. Uh, depart, uh, the departures of these people were deferred for uh, suspicion of uh, uh, being tourist workers. And uh, a total of 1,070 were referred uh, to the IACAT by the Travel Control Enforcement Unit and the Border Control Intelligence Unit of uh, the Bureau of Immigration to IACAT for being possible victims of trafficking in persons. And I was also listening to uh, the question of uh, Honorable Senator Aimee on uh, Member Sosa uh, regarding uh, legislative intervention. My prayer, uh, Your Honor, is uh, hopefully one of the result of this investigation is the passage of the new immigration law, which I think is a game changer for addressing the uh, multifaceted problem of corruption and the organizational problems in immigration. Uh, it would address the organizational reforms it would uh, improve the compensation package and probably, hopefully, a disciplinary mechanism given to the agency head to act uh, immediately on uh, reports of uh, irregularities. Uh, kasi po, coming from the PNP and uh, the armed forces before and taking from my experiences as a field commander, I, I follow the principle. I am, I believe that the greatest deterrent to any criminal and illegal activity is the certainty and timeliness of punishment. That is not an option available to the commissioner with the present antiquated law of immigration. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much, Madam, Madam Chair. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Chair. Yes, and I, me, and then Sir Joel. Yes, yeah, sorry, yes, this is a response, as uh, Commissioner Baum is well aware of. Uh, I've filed the uh, new immigration law 
Uh, yes, but it remains pending uh, with the committee of Senator Gordon. So, lakarin po natin kasi nandun, uh, it endows the commissioner with uh, far greater power so that he doesn't have to keep running to the DOJ and to other authorities to get uh, simple appointments or promotions moving. It also allows for a more uh, reasonable compensation package for those who work overtime in the airport and other areas of great temptation. So, sana magkahiring na, pero matagal-tagal na wala pa rin eh, kaya baka tulungan ako ng aking mga kapasenador. Kalampagin po natin, lalo na si uh, Chair Risa, na nakatenga uh, na pakaraming immigration issues na naglanding sa gender. Maraming pong salamat. Salamat po, ma'am. Salamat din, Sen. Aimi. And in fact, if it is proper, we could include in our committee report on this investigation explicit reference to the passage of the new immigration law and explicit reference to the bill of Sen. Aimi now pending in the other committee uh, as a respectful uh, request uh, and support to uh, Chairman Dick uh, to hear it uh, earlier than later. Salamat, Sen. Aimi. Yes, Sen. Joel. Yeah, uh, dear colleagues, I was about to uh, say the same thing that uh, perhaps in our committee report we will uh, point out the importance of empowering and uh, coming up with the, uh, a better version of our uh, uh, immigration uh, charter. But let me also just point out, Madam Chair, that uh, we salute and acknowledge the uh, competence and integrity of Commissioner Morente. I have been working with him for a uh, quite some time. Um, we are the first committee in the Senate that tackled the uh, the uh, the problems of uh, illegal uh, workers of Pogo. No? In, at, at, if you recall, at the Clark Air Base, uh, there were about 1,500 plus. And then, sila Commissioner uh, Argosino and the other commissioner, we, we forward it to the committee on uh, Blue Ribbon. No? And the rest is history. And uh, Commissioner Morente has been now uh, working with us at uh, uh, yung problema din dun sa SMORA, etc. So uh, we agree with what he is saying. Uh, we support the uh, empowerment and uh, a, a new charter for the uh, uh, Bureau of Immigration in order to to help uh, protect our uh, our kababayans. Kasi oh, yung dating charter, eh, pinaiikutan na nung mga mafia doon sa loob ng Bureau of Immigration. Kaya kahit na anong ganda ng intensyon at galing nung nakaupo, eh, kulang po yung kanyang kapangyarihan para uh, talagang uh, supilin itong mga kalokohan sa immigration. Maraming salamat, Madam Chair. Thank you. Maraming salamat din, Sen. Joel. Um, Ms. Diana, any last words mula sa iyo para sa ating hearing? Alam ko po yung mga fellow uh, migrant workers nyo nakikinig at uh, nag-cheer para sa iyo kahit pa kanina ay 4 a.m. yata sa kanila nung nagsimula tayo. Talagang nagpuyat sila para pakinggan ka at I'm sure nagdidiwang din dun sa anunsyo ni Charge the Affairs Versosa na sina um, Alice, Miss Alice at Miss Belen ay pauwi na sa loob ng dalawang linggo. So, last words po sa iyo sa hearing natin. Ah, uh... Uh, Ma'am, magpapasalamat po ako sa ginawa nyo, sa tulong na binibigay nyo po. At lalong-lalo na sa bagong embassy, uh, ambassador ng Sir, Ma'am, salamat sa tulong nyo. Kayo lang lang po kasi ang makakatulong sa mga Pilipina. Uh, sana po hindi po kayo magsawang tulungan sila. At saka sana po mamonitor nyo yung mga agency. By agency kasi alam ko hanggang ngayon nagpapadala pa rin sila ng tao sa Sir, ya. At sana po, lagi po kayong gabayan. Salamat sa tulong yung lahat. Sana hindi na po mangyari o ma matulad sa nangyari sa akin ang mga iba pang kababayan nating OFW sa Syria. Sa lahat po ng OFW sa Syria, kung naririnig kayo, para sa inyo itong ginagawa ko, magigi magiging maayos po kayo lahat at nakakauwi ng maayos dito sa Pilipinas. Maraming salamat po. Uh, magpapasalamat din po sana ako kay Honorable Arlene G. Bagao, Gobernador ng Dinagat Island sa tulong po ng financial. Salamat po, ma'am, sa inyong lahat. Yan lang po. Maraming salamat higit sa iyo, Miss Diana, at sa mga kababayan natin, mga kabaro natin, sina Miss Alice, Miss Belen, uh, Miss Carol. 
um, dahil po sa inyo. Kaya mas marami ang matutulungan. Higit pa sa amin na uh, ilan ba kami dito. Uh, 64 katao, siguro times 10, times 100 yung mga kababayan natin nanunood sa iyo sa Syria na nagpapasalamat din sa iyo. Uh, ingat uh, Miss Diana, uh, mag-keep in touch po tayo hanggat uh, madala natin sa mas mabungang konklusyon itong ating investigasyon sa tulong ng mga executive agencies na kalahok dito at uh, sabi nila laan silang tumulong sa ating mga kababayan at kabaro. So mga kasama, mga kaibigan, um, February 2020 pa lang na umpisa na hana natin ang investigasyon ukol sa napakalawak at napakalalim na korupsyon sa Bureau of Immigration. Naging laman ng balita ang tinatawag nating pastilya scam, isang modus na nagpapasok sa mga Chinese nationals pati mga Chinese na kriminal na nangaabuso ng ating kababaihan at bata. Pinapasok sila sa bansa ng walang inspeksyon sa halagang 10,000 pesos kada ulo. Ang masterminds sa likod nitong pastilla scam ay nakalikom na ng 40 billion pesos in bribe money. In the course of our investigations, we suspected na meron ding mga immigration officer na kumita sa atin namang outbound gates. At totoo nga ang mga suspecha natin. Para sa 50,000 pesos kada Pilipina, hinahaya ang palabasin ng ating mga immigration officers sa Pilipinas ang ating mga kababaihan papunta sa mga employer sa ibang bansa na bumibili sa kanila sa halagang umaabot sa $10,000. May mga pangalang paulit-ulit na binibigay ng ating mga whistleblowers sa illegal entry ng mga Chinong kriminal na parehong mga pangalan na ibinibigay ng ating mga saksi sa illegal na paglabas ng ating mga kababaihang Pilipino. Parehong cast of characters, ibang krimen. Habang nagpapapasok sila ng mga kriminal na Chino sa Pilipinas, pinapalabas naman nila ng bansa papunta sa kapahamakan ang ating mga kababaihan. Now, our women are abused in ways that approach crimes against humanity. I'd like to call on our government agencies, our embassies, ang DFA, ang OWA, ang POEA to immediately attend to this matter. Ang ating mga kababayan at kababaihan ay kailangan 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 ng tulong ninyo ngayon. Every minute of delay costs lives. Sa ating mga OFWs na nanonood ngayon, mga kasama ni Miss Diana at ni Miss Carol at Uh, Alice at saka Belen uh, tutulungan po namin lahat kayo and as we help our kababayan we also need to crack down on the human trafficking operation in the Bureau of Immigration tahas ang paglabag ito sa Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act ang mga pangalang mapag-alaman involved sa krimen ito ay masesentensyahan ng ating mga korte sa life imprisonment hindi po biro ang pinasok nila. Kaya kung may mga, ito po, kung may mga BI officers pa diyan na sangkot sa malalim na korupsyon sa ahensya at malawakang pangaabuso ng ating kababaihan, makipagtulungan na po kayo sa komite bago pa mahuli ang lahat. Naniniwala akong mabubuwag ang sindikatong ito sa loob ng BI. Hindi kami titigil. Nanganganak ang aming investigasyon at dumadami ang ebidensya. Sa hulit-huli, dahil sa tapang ng ating mga saksi, ang ating mga victim survivors, ng ating mga whistleblowers, makukulong din ang mga may sala. Dear friends, I adjourn this hearing as to Senate Resolution 131 and suspend this hearing as to Senate Resolution 631. We... Together with Senator Aimi and Senator Joel and our other colleagues in the committee, we commit our full cooperation to the NBI to turn over our evidence so that these pastillas wrongdoers will be prosecuted. Marami pong salamat sa lahat. Ingat po and stay healthy. Mabuhay ang aming chairwoman. Thank you. Mabuhay ka, chairwoman. Mabuhay, Sen. Aimi, Sen. Joel. Mabuhay. Thank you, Senator Joel. Maraming salamat, Commissioner. Maraming salamat.